on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land. And in the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. Angels are singing. Nobody, oh Lord. Singing. Nobody, oh Lord. Angels are singing. Oh. Nobody, oh Lord. They are singing. Brothers are singing, singing. Sisters are singing, they are singing. Children are singing, singing. I feel like praising the Lord. I feel like praising Jesus. Oh, I have touched the hem of His garment. I feel like praising the Lord. What about you? Present. I feel like praising the Lord. Praise Him. For I have touched the hem of His garment. I feel like praising the Lord. Where you praising? I feel like praising the Lord. Praise Him. For I have touched the hem of His garment. I feel like praising the Lord. Ogun ilewa, boro oluwa, ekba dala yimi, mo pariwo. Epa da le yimi, mo pari wo ogun. Ogun iluwa, boro oluwa. Epa da le yimi, mo pari wo. Epa da le yimi, mo pa. Do ngo. People they ask me, say, what in they make me shine? I can't they tell them, say, my Jesus they make me. Have they asked you? People they ask me, say. Waiting they make me shine. How can they tell them say that Jesus they make me shine? They do tell them, Sister Queen, have you told them? Waiting they make me shine. How can they tell them say that Jesus they make me shine? People they ask me say, Joseph, waiting they make you young. How can they tell them say, my Jesus they make me? I will told them. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I can't tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. Only you I will serve. I will serve. I will serve. I will serve. Only you I will serve. I will serve. I will serve. Only you I will serve. I serve no other God. Only you I will serve. Only you I will serve. I have no other God. Only you I will serve. I will serve. I will serve. Only you I will serve. I have no other God. Only you I will serve. Only you I will serve. I have no other God. Jesus, now you be called. Amen. Say, O Lord, my Father, give me your Holy Spirit to hear what you want me to hear in today's message. In the name of Jesus. 
open your mouth and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to hear what you need to hear in this message. That which will move your life forward, that will empower you, that will strengthen you, and you will receive a new lease of life. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, speak to me directly from the throne of grace. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, Lord, we thank you. We are in your presence. We know you love us. We know we have been blessed. And we know more blessings are coming. Father, speak to us today. Give us the word for the moment. Give us the heart to receive the word. Apply faith to it. Act on it. And so that our prophecy may appear for all to see. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Be seated. God bless you. We thank God for our dear sister, Sister Queen, who is marking 50 years today. We give God the glory for her life. I want you to listen very well this morning for what the Lord has to say to you. And I want you to turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 16 to verse 18. If you are there, shout hallelujah. If you are looking, say God help me. The Lord will help you. Are you close? Okay, shall we read? Verse 16, rejoice evermore. 17, pray without ceasing. 18, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Turn with me again to Psalm 34. And this is not the time to be loitering about, please. You have to stay in one place. You're either in or out. Psalm 34, verse 1. What does it say? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen? I got this message this morning. What are you grateful for? What did I say? What are you grateful for? That Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The Bible passages that we have read, they show us to be thankful, not only for all things, but in the midst of all things. That is, we should not only be thankful for those things that we desire that came to pass, but those challenges that we also passed through. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That is, when things are good, I will bless the Lord. When things are not following my desired uh, expectations, I will still do what? I will bless the Lord. Bible scholars said that Job was the first book written in the Bible. And I believe it. And uh, I believe it is true. And if it is true, that means God wants to tell us that life is hard. Are you following me? If Job was the first book that was written, I believe God wants us to know that this life is what? Is hard, is tough, is difficult. But God is also telling us that no matter what you pass through, the end of our life will be glorious. 
Because if you look at Job from chapter 1 to chapter 42, you will see that Job went through a lot of hardships, a lot of tough, tough times. But the Bible says the latter end of Job was better and greater than his beginning. Praise the Lord. And this is in line with what God told us in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He said, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you and I, what? An expected end. And I believe Jesus Christ also confirmed this when he said, In the world you will have tribulations. There will be challenges. But he says, Share up. Don't let those challenges swallow you. Don't let them dictate your life. Share up because at the end of the day, you will still celebrate, you will rejoice, things will work in your favor. Praise the Lord. Again, what are you grateful for? It's a big question. And somebody said, an ungrateful person is hopeless, is helpless, and we constantly live a frustrated life. An ungrateful person, I say it again, is hopeless, is helpless, and we always live what? A frustrated life. He feels hopeless. He feels helpless because there has never been a time where we appreciate things that have been done for him or her. And what happened? He will constantly live what? A frustrated life. Many years ago when I turned 25, I was doing my art, IT in Loring, uh, Quara State, and it was a Tuesday morning. I was waiting for the clerk to come and open the office, and it was raining, I was at the balcony, and suddenly I remember it was my 25th birthday. You know, uh, it's when I got to America that I saw that birthday is a big deal. That you remember from January 1 that I, will be, I was born in October. Then you start counting days. Amen. Several times I forgot my birthday. I remember a week after it had passed. Praise the Lord. And so I was not preparing for anything. And that got me thinking, ah, I turned 25 today. And those are the days when you carry diaries. How many of you used diary before? And I wrote in my diary, nothing to celebrate. I look at my life. I look at how I was struggling. I look that I, I was in school and how tough it was to go through school. I felt helpless. I felt hopeless. I looked at suffering every day. Amala was the cheapest food. White Amala was the cheapest food and it was my favorite. Amen. Not that I don't like rice, but I couldn't afford it. And I look at everything about me. And I develop what is called victim mentality. I blame my parents. I blame God. I blame everyone blamable. Why is my life like this? But because of where I focused, that made me to develop that victim mentality. After all, there was still somebody who denied himself to put me in school. There are so many of my classmates who were good that became what? Taxi drivers. Because there was nobody to put them in school. When you develop victim mentality, check your focus. That is why that hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. I know. Christian life is a battle. I've been following Jesus for so many years now, decades. And as I look at these years, there have been years of great, great blessings. More than I could ever imagine. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And I will give God the glory for this. But at the same time, there have been many challenges and obstacles. I don't think there has been years or let me just say months without facing any challenge in my life and those challenges were multi-dimensional 
They were various in nature. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I mean, there have been times of intense temptation, doubt, fear, and anxiety. There have been times of deep sadness, great loss, bereavement. I felt hopeless. I felt that God, have you abandoned me? Praise the Lord. There have been battles over my head, my sleep, my finances, my work, my ministry, my family. And there have been periods of great opposition and criticism. Amen? And as a pastor, I've been very lonely. I've moved through the narrow path. It's been very, very tough and difficult. Are you still with me? I've suffered serious betrayers. Some years ago, I think we just moved to this building. We had a very beautiful service. Last Sunday of the year. Beautiful, glorious. I went into my office thanking God. One person who was very, very, I mean, who was uh, uh, like almost the sole administrator of his department, just walked to my office and he said, Pastor, today is my last day in your church. Ah! I look at him. I felt sorrowful. I was angry. I was frustrated. The Holy Spirit told me, pray for him. If I tell you it was easy for me to pray for him, I'd be telling you lies. But I had to obey the Holy Spirit. I heard him. I prayed with him. I prayed that God would use him more wherever he was going. But God brought another replacement. And the department did not suffer for one day. For one day. I've worked with amazing people. I've worked with people who believed in me and the ministry. I've worked with people who rebuke me out of love, out of we want this church to grow. They have shown me love. I've been celebrated many times. What am I trying to say? Life is full of battles, but life is not all battles. Are you still with me? Life is full of battles, but life is not what? All battles. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 45 verse 7, God says, I created light and darkness. I created trials and peace. I am the God. I allowed all these things. And somebody said, he said, give thanks in everything because everything made you who you are today. Are you still with me? In your trials, in the times of joy, time of peace, time of abandonment, times of people coming around you to support you, everything combined together made you who you are today. That is why you should do what? Give thanks at all times. Again, the question is, what are you grateful for? Amen? You have been blessed. You may not know it. Yes, you have worked very hard. You have labored, you have prayed, you have gone to school, you have studied, you have achieved so many things. But let me tell you, where you are today is not, because, it's not only because of your hard work. It's not, because, it's not only because of your labors. God has blessed you beyond your ability, your efforts, your gifts, your education, and your background. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Then I say again, what are you grateful for? Let's look at some blessings, what we call blessings. And then you will now conclude, after we look at this, whether you have been blessed or not. Amen? Number one, let's look at material blessings. When we came to the U.S., when we were coming to the U.S., myself, my wife, and my daughter... We had only two boxes for three of us. We managed to, you know, use a rope to tie one to get to New York. 
<laughs> there was nothing there to steal anyway. <laughs> because when I was coming, my jacket, my shoe, okrika. I went to Yaba, bend down. You know what is called bend down? Bosikoro. Amen? So I even bought used tie to match. You know, you are going to Nibu land. We don't know whether they will allow you to wear buba or your native dress. So you have to dress English way. Praise the Lord. And I know there are some of you here today that came only with a box. If you have to go home today, and you have to take everything that is valuable to you, not those ones that are not valuable, everything that is valuable to you. I don't think a container will contain what you... Am I correct? I know there are some of us here, we have clothes that we have not put on for three years. Shoes that we even forgot that we had. There was a time I saw a very nice pant and I bought it. I didn't know I had one in my wardrobe. Materially, have you been blessed? Answer me now. Have you been blessed? God has blessed you. Now let's look at finances. Can you show me slide one, please? We look at three slides this session. Amen. Your finances, family income. The household income level in the US to, USA today for a family of four is what? 29,520 dollars. Family of four, average. Slide two. Now look at that slide. This is talking about the personal income and where you are globally. Do you understand me now? Personal income and where you are globally. So if you are earning $29,520 a year, you are among the 11% of the wealthiest people in the world. If you are earning $30,000, you are among the top 10%. If you are earning $36,000, you are among the top 7%. If you are earning 42,000, you are among the top 5%. If you are earning 48,000 per annum, you are among the top 3%. And if you are earning $57,000 a year, you are among the 1% of the wealthiest people in the world. How many of you have been blessed? How many of you have been blessed? Praise the Lord. So financially, God has blessed you. Am I right? Now, slide three. World poverty level. There are millions of people earning more than 57,000 annually. Am I right? If you're earning more than 57,000 annually, you're among the top 1% of the world rich people. Now, remember that 3 billion people live on less than how much? $2 a day. How many of us are living on $2 a day here? Your coffee alone, how much? Your children's snack that they take to school. Amen? I know today is Sunday now. Some of you will go out and eat, except that we have plenty of food in the house anyway. Praise the Lord. You are blessed without knowing it. I know you cannot say you are satisfied right now. But focus on what God has done. Focus on where you started to where God has taken you right now. You have been blessed beyond measure. I know you still have higher targets. There is something you are still looking forward to. Am I right? By God's grace, you will get there. But be grateful for where you are today. Praise the Lord. Now, when you look at our environment, living in the USA gives you opportunity for prosperity, Access to resources. Many of you could not have a business when you were home. Now you have a business of your own. Am I right? Some of you could not go to school. Many of us will not go to school if we are still in Nigeria or Africa. And unfortunately, back home now, there are 
they want to approve another 86 universities. People are going to school, but they are not bringing anything out. No opportunity. Most of our boys have become Yahoo guys. Ritual killers. Look at our environment. Access to resources. You have freedom, stability, security, opportunity for career, opportunity for education, opportunity for business. I remember somebody wanted to register a business very close to me in my home in Nigeria. The lawyer was asking for 600,000 naira to register a business. If you want to register a business, yeah, what do you do? You go to downtown, assume business, $26. You get your tax ID here online. And you start doing your business. Opportunities here. Yeah. Have you been blessed? Answer me. Have you been blessed? Can you tell me now that you have things to be grateful for? Okay, let's go on. Head. Can you show me slide four, please? Life expectancy. America, we have availability of medical assistance. This has enhanced what? Life expectancy. Look at that. Mozambique. Mozambique. 39 years. Life expectancy. Somalia. 48 years. Djibouti. 55 years. U.S. 78 and a half years from insurance survey and if god helps you and you take good care of yourself what happened you live longer does that make sense america has provided health facilities that help you to live longer have you been blessed praise the lord praise the living jesus another area of blessing the people around you your spouse your kids, family, friends, church members, people you make friends with at place of work, you have plenty of friends. You have people around you. If you want to talk, there are people who can talk with you for one hour. They will not be tired. If you want to visit, their home is available. Every weekend there is party. You have people around you. You belong to some, some people that are checking on you, calling you. You are taking that for granted? No. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And when you also look at spiritual blessings, which is very, very important, salvation of your soul, words of encouragement, comfort, guidance, direction, strength, hope, people who are praying with you, people who are encouraging you in the things of God, it is a big blessing. And when you also look at the present, the former, and the future blessings, you are a special person to the Almighty God. Amen? And we can go on and go on like that. Now, the question is, what are you grateful for? If you count your blessings, if you name them one by one, you have many reasons to thank God. Am I right? So what do you do all the time? Number one, appreciate God for what he has done. Do what? Appreciate God for who? For what? For what? He has done so much for you, according to the word of God, that song. You cannot count them all. You cannot tell them all. And the reason we don't see this is because some of us, we have developed what? Victim mentality. We focus on what God has not done, and we allow this to neutralize what God has done. In our primary school, they told us uh, the story of three people who went to the river to bath. The first one had a wrapper. The other one had only a pant. And the third one was naked. The first one plunged himself into the river, took a bath, shook himself for the water to dry a little bit, used his wrapper, to wrap himself, he look up, God, I thank you. I may not have a house full of um, clothes, but I have this beautiful wrapper to wrap myself. He went away. 
the one with only one pant, got inside the river, took a bath, shook himself, put on the pant, said, Lord, I thank you. I am not completely naked. I give you glory. The third one who was naked also got into the river, took a shower, and then he shook himself before he walked away naked. He said, God, I thank you. I'm alive. There are some people who are in the grave. What is this telling us? No matter where you are, you have reasons to thank God. No matter what you are going through, you have many reasons to glorify God. So, appreciate God in whatever situation you find yourself. Number two, trust him for what he has not done. Do what? Trust him for what he has not done. One prayer I like to pray to God when I face challenges and things seem to be difficult, I will tell God, by your divine intervention, I am where I am today. Intervene again and move me forward. Amen? I mean, I always look at where I started. How there was no hope. I've told you the story before that when, we were, when I was in primary school, we were coming from the farm and wanted to bath near the river, in the river, the brook. I didn't know when I said, ah, if I can get somebody who will make a vow to me that he would train me up to university level, and the person said, the only thing I want is to roll in this mud. I said, I will first of all roll my head. And my father looked at me and said, what are you saying? You will go to university. In my mind, you know you don't talk to elders. In my mind, you are still struggling with the firstborn. I am number three. You are assuring me. You are doing three jobs to take care of the first one. What is the hope for the third one? But God works in a mysterious way. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Trust him. He will do more for you. It doesn't matter how bleak your future appears to be. God hosts your future. And he will take care of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The third thing is, be patient. Be what? Be patient. You can't have everything the same day. God has appointed time for everybody. Amen? Endure this moment. It will not last forever. God will come through. He will change your stories in the mighty name of Jesus. And I told us endurance means what? Faith plus obedience plus patience. You put your trust in God. You obey his instructions. Then you wait for his timing. And it will surely come true. The next one, always be contented. What did I say? That's one of the problems. We are not always contented. It's a major problem in our journey with God. Yes. Be contented. That doesn't mean you cannot aspire for higher ground. That doesn't mean you cannot ask for more. But be satisfied with what you have. I put a, uh, something in the bulletin. Um, two friends met each other on the street one day. One looked forlorn, almost on the verge of tears. His friend asked, What has the world done to you, my old friend? The sad fellow said, Let me tell you. Three weeks ago, my uncle died and left me $40,000. The other one answered, That's a lot of money. But you see, two weeks ago, a cousin I never even knew died. And left me $85,000 free and clear. Huh? Sounds to me that you have been very blessed. The other one said. You don't understand. He interrupted. Last week, my great aunt passed away. I inherited almost a quarter of a million from her. The same person. Now, the man's friend was really confused. Then, why do you look so gloom? This week, nothing. Do you understand the story at all? Praise the Lord. 
This week, maybe his mother should die. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We can often come to the point where we expect to get certain blessings. And when they do not come, it is easy to get bitter. Amen? It is easy to do what? To get bitter. God has done so much for you. And the same God who did so much for you is going to do more for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So be contented, no matter the situation. Amen? The best way, number five, to express your gratitude to God is to obey and serve him at all times. Praise the Lord. Obey and do what? Let's look at the quotes in this slide. Then we round up. Slide five, please. Slide five. Be grateful for what you already have. Why you pursue what? Why you pursue what? Do you know when you are not grateful, you don't appreciate what you have, you won't pursue your goals most of the time because you'll be dwelling on what God has not done. If you aren't grateful for what you already have, what makes you think you will be happy with more? Because you will always have needs. Am I right? If you are not grateful for where you are today, what makes you to think that when you grow, when you are promoted, you will be grateful and be contented? Because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. I said it earlier. All things have contributed to what? Answer me now. Maybe because somebody insulted you, that is why you went back to school. Maybe because of the hardship in your family, that is why you just said, desire to diversify into business. And it's working for you. All your pains, all your groanings, all your frustrations, and all other things have contributed to what? To your advancement. Therefore, be grateful in every situation. Let's rise up. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord. Everybody sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. A joyful, a joyful song. song. I will praise his name. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord. A joyful song. And praise his name. For the Lord is good. Everybody sing unto the Lord. A joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good. I want us to close our eyes right now and I want us to focus on the blessings that we have enjoyed and the ones that we are enjoying right now and begin to thank the Lord for them. Open your mouth, thank the Lord for sound mind, for protection, for his provisions, for all the blessings that money cannot buy that you are enjoying. For the people around you, those who have supported you, those who have helped you, and they are still helping you. Thank the Lord for the wonderful, wonderful people around you. People that you can confide in. People that you can tell your problems. And they will encourage you. People will go out of their way to be a blessing. I appreciate God for them. Thank God for your health. That your life today is a big blessing. Thank God for protection. Thank God for provisions. Thank God for your immediate family, your spouse, your children, and everyone around you in your household. Give God the glory. Together you have gone through thick and thin, 
and you are still strong. You are still standing. God has been good to you. Thank the Lord for your higher grant. Where God is taking you, because you trust him, things will get better. In the name of Jesus. I appreciate God for the household of faith. Thank God for this day is a day of blessing. A day of signs and wonders in your life and in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord for your career, your job, your business. That which is bringing you income. Thank the Lord for it. God has provided for you. He has opened his channel of blessings through your career, through your business. Give God the glory. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for America, the land that has given you opportunity, the land of blessing. Thank the Lord for what you have achieved in this country. Thank the Lord for what you are yet to achieve, where God is taking you. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I bless your holy name for this great opportunity to serve you, to be a pastor. I am grateful. Thank you for the strength, for the grace. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the household of faith. Thank you for those who have encouraged me, those who have worked with me, those who believe in me, those who have worked with the ministry. I give you glory. I am not taking this for granted. I appreciate you for these great opportunities. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say, I forbid any error that will bring me down. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray and forbid it. Any error that will bring me down, I cancel it. I nullify it. I forbid it. Higher ground is my portion. In the name of Jesus, I come, I come against any error of omission, of commission. That will bring me down. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I come against them. All error, agenda of the wicked. To pull me down. I nullify, I cancel. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, oh Lord, my Father, that which I desire. That I, I am here to receive. Intervene again. And give it to me. In the name of Jesus. You have done it before. I am where I am today. Because of your intervention, Father, intervene again and deliver it to me. In the name of Jesus, do it again. Make a way for me. Make room for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, oh Lord, advance my life and make me a blessing to my generation. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, I cry to you, ad advance my life, make me a blessing to my generation. Father, Lord, advance my life, make me a blessing to my generation. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally say, O oh Lord, turn my secret ears to open joy and open celebrations. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, turn my secret ears to open joy, to open celebration. Blessing that cannot hide. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We adore you, we worship you for what you have done for us in life. That we are alive today is a blessing. We have been blessed beyond our ability, beyond our capacity, beyond our education, beyond our backgrounds. We give you all the glory. You are a loving and caring father. We release ourselves again into your holy hands. By that mighty hands, move us to the next level. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. 